guys, I'm um, coming at you today with a video update um, about Punta Cana, uh, my personal trip to Punta Cana, our time there as a family, and a review of the Nickelodeon Resort by Charisma there in, um, in Punta Cana. So, uh, we just got back, gosh, late last week. <laughs> uh, we flew in and out of Toronto, and if you live in western New York, that can be a um, re really easy uh, airport to fly in and out of to get some direct flights and when you fly with a now six-year-old who just had his birthday um, it's nice to have that a uh, direct flight um, also I do find the Toronto Airport really easy to navigate um, it's really streamlined uh, it's very modern it's very courteous um, so it is nice to fly out of there and uh, we usually go a night before up to Toronto and spend the night in a hotel so it does kick off the vacation a little bit earlier to do it like that. So let's talk about Punta Cana. <laughs> um, so for a while it was in the news and um, now the news has sort of shifted. Uh, I feel like there's always something the media wants us to be um, afraid of. And it, they were hitting Punta Cana pretty hard, Dominican Republic, and now it's flesh-eating viruses and shark attacks. So, um, oh, and and seaweed. What are we gonna do about the seaweed? <laughs> um, so my impression is, you know, I, I did a lot of. Um, I did stay on top of the news as it was happening because obviously anybody would be concerned if their family were traveling to a, um, a destination that they could perceive isn't safe. Um, but you know, coming from a science background, <laughs> the first thing I do is say, okay, what, what do we know about these cases? Do they line up? What are the, what are the things that are similar? What are the things that are different? And um, for me, I wasn't really seeing anything that was a consistent trend that was a worrying trend. Um, the other thing I realized is that like, because you know, us and we in the U.S. get so worked up about these things that the FBI and the CDC were on the ground. So I would think, even if there were something to worry about, now would be the time that you would go because it is under a microscope that is being investigated. So if there was something amiss or something that they weren't necessarily taking into account or, um, you know, being on their you know, they're most diligent about, they would certainly be doing it now because they're being investigated. Um, so that being said, you know, we do know that we can't drink water out of the taps. Uh, at the resorts, they do filter the water um, in food production. So your ice is gonna be filtered. Um, all of the water that they use for cooking um, and washing produce is gonna be filtered. Um, it's not going to be filtered in your room. So make sure if you're brushing your teeth, you are using that bottled water. Don't rinse your toothbrush in that water. The other thing to remember, and this is happening even in the US, especially a resort with lots of kids, um, not every parent is diligent about getting their kid to use the bathroom um, and taking those bathroom breaks and cleaning those swim diapers. So, <laughs> don't swallow that pool of water. Um, and if you have open sores or anything like that, definitely take that into consideration. It could be an issue. Um, but that being said, these are things that you would have to be wary of anywhere. Um, that being said, we had a beautiful time at Nickelodeon. The resort was really good. Uh, I would say, you know, the, the Charisma brand really does try to tout itself as a gourmet all-inclusive. What I say by my standards here in the U.S. if I was going to this resort, is it gourmet? Mm, no. <laughs> um, what I say for, you know, Caribbean all-inclusives, was the food good? Yes, the food was very good by those standards. Um, and I just think that that's the nature of the all-inclusives. They're cooking for lots of people. Um, you know, if you go to an Asian restaurant, which we did, the Asian food was fine. Um, it wasn't spectacular. You know, I'm picky about my pad thai here and there's restaurants that I like better than I than others. And that's with people who are from Thailand cooking my food. So, you know, it was okay. It was okay Thai food. It was fine. It wasn't spectacular, but it was good. Um, I did order a steak twice and those were surprisingly good. I don't usually have a lot of luck with good steaks, so those were good. 
Um, pasta was good. The buffet was fantastic. Um, I really have trouble with buffet food in general. I don't typically like it, but I do think that everything in the buffet was fresh. Um, it was cooked well and it had good flavor. So I think in terms of standards for the buffet, it was great. Uh, there was a restaurant called Space Walker that puts on a big to-do um, in terms of its theming, its uh, astronaut theming. Was it my favorite food? Um, a little, uh, a little weird for the sake of being weird. You know, um, things with like garlic foam and you know, it was just trying a little too hard for me um, and not hitting the marks that it needed to if it was going to be gas like fancy gastronomy. Um, but again, it, good food. The food was good consistently. The drinks were good consistently. Um, very clean rooms, very well designed. The only complaint I have about our room is get it together with the light switches. <laughs> if you stayed there, maybe you've realized that suddenly you turn on a light switch in the bathroom and it turns on a light in the bedroom which isn't the greatest when somebody gets up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. The light switches were a little weird. There was probably 142 light switches in our room. Couldn't figure out what they were turning on and off. Sometimes turning off lights in rooms that we weren't standing in with the switch. <laughs> so that's my only complaint. It, well, I feel like I needed a master's degree to figure out which lights turned on what and why. <laughs> Um, so we did stay in a flat suite to start with. That's what we reserved. Um, and it was beautiful. Uh, it was very nice. So they have a pad and a flat suite. The pad suite um, is a traditional kind of suite where you have your king size bed um, and then a pull out couch uh, and they share the same space. The flat suite does divide that with doors. Um, so you have big sliding doors. So it is nice when you put the kiddo to bed early and then you guys, you know, the adults can stay up and watch TV and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the bathrooms are beautifully designed. A little bit more thought maybe into the functionality of the beautiful design, but nothing to complain about. Um, and then for the last uh, two nights, we upgraded to a swim up pad suite. So again, the pad suites, you're sharing the same space, but we did have the swim up option, which was very nice. We really enjoyed it. We really took advantage of it. Um, got a pool floaty. And for that last full day at the resort, we really just had a lazy day. Um, we were in building two by Fresco and the food there is great. Um, amazing, amazing food at Fresco. So would definitely suggest building two because hit and fresco for lunch was awesome um beach was great um we couldn't go in the water our beach day because there was jellyfish but the seaweed was not an issue um we could dip our feet in a little bit at the shore and the water was warm wasn't crazy wavy or anything like that um this you know this windward side of Punta Cana isn't known for having great beaches just because they tend to be a little bit choppy um, and there can be a lot of seaweed and that's just the nature of the island. Um, I'm not a huge beach fan so it was okay with me. We got a cabana um, and our cabana was kind of located right near um, the entrance to the beach and maybe about 40 feet from the pool so we were able to like rinse off the sand, jump in the pool when we needed to cool off and then go back to the cabana. But the breeze down there was lovely. I could have stayed there all day. Plenty of wait staff coming around with drinks. Um, the main pool area at the resort, again, lovely swim up bar, infinity pool, um, attached to an activities pool where they would have things like water yoga, like paddle board um, fitness. And like they did that a couple times with the kids. Um, and again, really nice cabanas there. And of course there was the Aquanick. The, um, so in terms of the resort itself, there's two resorts that share this space. You've got your Nickelodeon Resort, which is obviously very family friendly. And then you have your um, Sensori. Um, Sensori does have some adult only and then some family friendly. Again, probably not a resort if you're really looking for adult time. It is very much a family resort. Um, the Nick stuff was not overdone. In terms of the main resort area, you didn't see characters unless you went to the character breakfast, which is the only thing that's an extra fee. We did because we, we love a character breakfast. We're a Disney family. So a character breakfast is right up our alley. Um, and I'll show you guys some videos from that and some photos. It was really fun and really well done. 
the character bre breakfast was great. Um, definitely suggest doing it. Um, it's worth the extra money, we thought. And the food was good. Uh, in terms of the Nickelodeon-ness of the resort, um, very subtle touches. It's, um, you know, really subtle touches of orange in your room, that Nickelodeon orange color and that green, um, but not overdone. So if you're hoping that you're gonna have characters everywhere and they're gonna be jumping out at you and they're gonna be entertaining your kids everywhere, not gonna happen. Uh, and again, if you're scared <laughs> that you're gonna walk into a theme park with lots of characters, it's not gonna happen. It's very much a very subtle in the main area of the resort. Now, Aquanick is a totally different ball game. So if you're staying on the Nickelodeon side, you get complimentary access to the Aquanick. Um, before I went, I was seeing some people complaining that the Aquanick is so far away, it's across the street, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so from our room, I timed it. It was a six minute walk. It's not that far. Uh, maybe we're a little jaded because we're a Disney family and we're used to walking a lot. And I can tell you, it took us six minutes to walk there. I kept giving myself 15 minutes to go over there, especially if my son was in the kids club and we were always just sitting around waiting for it to open. So again, it's not that far. You can get on the little golf cart shuttles and they do come around, but it can take 20 minutes. And again, that was another complaint that I read online is people are like, oh, the golf carts take so long to come around to shuttle you. Again, we're a Disney family. We're, we sat around waiting for a bus <laughs> for 20 minutes or more to take us to a park or back to the resort. So it didn't phase us at all. Um, if that's not something that you're used to, just be aware that you know you know if you wanna walk, it's gonna be anywhere from six to 10 minutes, depending on your pace. And if you don't wanna walk, you might have to wait 20 minutes for one of the golf carts to come around. Well worth it though. The Aquanick was awesome. It was a great water park. So the actual water park area with the slides, and I'll show you guys some pictures and videos, that is for the kids only. Parents cannot go on those slides. They're not up in there. You will get a whistle blown at you. There's lifeguards all over. Um, obviously you can, you know, if you wanna walk up the stairs with your kiddo, but you can't go down any of those slides. Um, the Lazy River is awesome. No lines ever, no like wait to get a float in and out whenever you wanna go. It's, it was beautiful. Um, and then a couple areas where you can kind of just dip in and swim. Um, but it was great. And again, food and uh, they have the, um, Aqua Bites <laughs> over there, which is where they serve lunch. Um, and again, it's gonna be things like little flatbread pizzas, very family and kid friendly foods, hot dogs, wraps, stuff like that, cookies, ice cream. Uh, but you can get alcoholic beverages and um, you will have stay, uh, wait staff coming around. Um, we usually didn't, we would order drinks from them, lots of water. Uh, we would order drinks, but we usually walked over to the um, to the actual like restaurant to eat because it helped break up the day a little bit and get us out of the sun. I will say I've never had, I mean, I'm crazy about sunscreen, crazy. And I definitely got a sunburn and I would recommend getting a swim shirt, like a UV swim shirt for the Aquanick. It's just, it's, there's just a lot of sun. Even when you're in the shade, once you're in like the lazy river or any of that, it's not covered. I got a bad sunburn on my back, even though I was really diligent with the sunscreen. Um, and on site, first of all, you, I ended up with a SpongeBob swim shirt because <laughs> it's Nickelodeon. What are you gonna do? Um, and it was $50. Buy one before you go because you probably don't wanna get stuck with a $50 SpongeBob <laughs> sun shirt or uh, swim shirt. So maybe something, even if you're not typically the type of person who would need that, probably worth picking one up at like Walmart or Target or Amazon before you go just to be safe. Uh, my husband ended up needing one too. Like it was, it was bad. <laughs> and we, like I said, we're pretty diligent. Um, so yeah, um, anything other than that? I mean, really a lot of your typical all-inclusive stuff. If you are a single person who's wanting to party and go with friends, not the resort for you. Not a huge banging nightlife kind of thing. Um, if you're a family, the kids club closes at nine. Um, my son loved it. I mean, he's a lonely only and he had a great time. Sometimes it takes him a little while to warm up to those things and he had a blast. He always wanted to be in the kids club. So, you know, but it does close at nine. So you're, it, unless you have other people with you, grandma, grandpa, helping to watch the kids. But again, it's a pretty chill 
nightlife scene. Um, not, there's no big foam parties, there's no big like crazy party drinking scene. Um, we did see some people there who were, you know, young adults that were traveling a group and they were drinking, but again, you're just kind of sitting around watching like musicians and stuff like that. Like not a big party scene. So not the right resort for you. If you're looking to relax, if you um, don't mind being in a family friendly resort, the sensory side had a lot more um, yoga and fitness and things like that. So like during the day, you know, you can get away and, and be a little bit more zen, if you will. Um, but just really a relaxing resort, a resort, a beautiful resort, really pretty, good food, um, and again, plentiful food and drink. So I think more, much more a relaxing and calming resort, regardless of which side you're on. Um, and again, we ate and drank everything. We had no issues. Um, the other thing about this resort is that Charisma does offer timeshares for their resorts. Um, it didn't happen to us, but I have heard that the concierge can be a little pushy with that. Uh, I think they knew I was a travel agent, so they didn't put the hard sell on. They asked if I wanted to go to a presentation, um, and we just declined politely, and they didn't ask again. Um, and you do need your personal concierge to help you make your dining reservations. Um, they do make a reservation for you at each restaurant each night. So they will help with that and things like booking your breakfast, your character breakfast, um, if you wanna have those kind of things. Um, but I have heard about concierge being pushy. If you are experiencing that, my advice is, and I always tell this to my clients, just decline working with that personal concierge who's assigned to you. There is a concierge in the main lobby. So just go up there um, your first night um, and or the, or the next morning, depending on what time you get in, because I think they're only open until 4 p.m. Um, and do your dining reservations in the main lobby. Um, and they're right there at the activities desk. So you can always do that. Um, don't ever feel pressured on your vacation to go to any kind of presentation. They do offer you a few perks if you go. It depends on if you think it's worth your vacation time to do that. Um, if you go to the presentation, they will give you a free character breakfast. And if it's open, they will let you tour that um, pineapple villa. I didn't do it. <laughs> My vacation time is precious to me. I don't want to spend any of it in a presentation. So I was happy to pay for the breakfast. Um, so that's up to you. If you want to go to the presentation just so that you can get those perks, by all means go. Um, your concierge definitely gets a kickback if you, even if you just attend. So it, that might be why they're, they can be a little pushy. But again, just remember you can opt out of that and do not feel obligated. I think that's all I have on the Nickelodeon Resort. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Um, you can always reach out to me as well via email, through my Facebook group, um, or Instagram. So go and follow those as, as well. Um, they get po posted to and updated pretty consistently, um, especially with new promotions on different with different vendors and things like that. So if there is something that you're looking for, um, and new things come out. I usually do post them there. Uh, also working on a couple different groups as well. So we'll keep you guys up to date on that. Um, that's all I have for now. <laughs> and um, yeah, so if you need me, you know how to find me. I hope you all have a magical day and I will see you real soon.